institute itself. Yeah. Thank you, Anandita. Uh, it's uh, really a pleasure to be here. And I first heartily welcome all of you to this very special event where we are celebrating the two Bhatnagar Awards in chemistry this year. Uh, as many of you know that ISERs uh, were established about 12 years back. In fact, the first ISERs were established were ISER Kolkata and ISER Pune in 2006. Subsequently, there have been five, ICERs, five more ISERs. So what is important is that uh, we are now beginning to have a kind of recognition that I think the ISERs deserve. And these are among the first awards, Bhatnagar awards, from the ISER system. So that is a very important thing to celebrate, that this is the first time that the ISERs have been getting this prestigious Santisaru Bhatnagar Award. As many of you know, of course, that Santisaru Bhatnagar Award themselves are very important recognition. It is the highest recognition which is bestowed by the government of India for carrying out mainly fundamental research in India. Uh, and I think we are very happy that the ISERs were established to carry out fundamental research and I think that mandate, I believe, we are fulfilling in a good way. Of course, in addition to the carrying out fundamental research, we have been very active in also translating research and into a various forms like making products to the industry. We have also done incubation center. But indeed, basic science is something that we take pride of. And I'm very happy to say that not only these two Bhatnagar Awards, Aisha Kolkata has been very active in getting recognitions at different age groups. In fact, just after the Bhatnagar Awards have been announced, one of our faculties, Professor Purnaslav Bhaduri, has also received Sarnajanti Fellowship in Art Science. In fact, this is also, I must say, the three uh, Sarnajanti Fellowships in a row for Aisha Kolkata, starting from Malla Reddy in Chemistry, and then Rahul, Rahul Banerjee, who also got Bhatnagar Award, who is here with us in last year, and now Professor Bhaduri this year. So I think it just shows that at different level we have been doing well, but we are particularly proud of the Bhatnagar Award because this is the highest recognition that the country can give. And I think it's, uh, it's a really a singular moment for us. Singular moment, especially because it's very rare. I think it's an absolutely rare event of two awards, Bhatnagar Awards, coming in the chemistry to the same department. I think an absolutely rare event. And that, that suddenly is, stands us apart from others, makes us stand apart from others. And I think this is why we are very proud. I hope more such recognitions will come, a different age group, from the young scientists to Sarnajanti, which is given below 40, to Bhatnagar Awards and, and beyond. I think there are lots of recognitions. I'm sure that will come. But today, we have Professor Sadin Mandal and Professor Rahul Banerjee, uh, whose work we would like to celebrate. And I think this whole event is essentially to tell the general people what is their work, not only to the peer community, but also to others who are engaged with science in various forms. I think they should know what, what is the work that has brought this recognition. And that is eventually the most important part. And I, I'm, I'm sure that in the course of the time, uh, they will elaborate uh, on, on their work. So, Shadin, yeah. you've been here uh, longer than any of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that you've been here from the beginning of Isaac Kolkata, and I'm sure it's been a difficult journey because we began with almost nothing, right? And from there to the Bhatnagar. It must be a great feeling. Obviously, I mean, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, uh, when you talk about my journey at Isaac Kolkata, I always take pride that. I am born here, I am brought up here actually, academically, I mean. So I started my career in 2007, uh, when literally there was nothing, uh, basically, you know, I mean, so when you start a chemistry lab, what is the basic equipment you require is the NMR spectrometer, let's say. And then when I joined, there is nothing, and I was told that you have to purchase a NMR spectrometer, and then you can start your research. You can understand that purchasing a big equipment, and in a government institution yeah, right. with all of the course, formalities. Of course, absolutely. So it took almost one and a half years to really get started with our basic instrument. So, and in the last 10 years, we, have to, we had to move like three times, which is kind of rare in Indian scenario. You can see in Europe, uh, scientists are moving while doing their 
so I mean career actually, so well, career progressing. But in India, don't see that scientists are moving so many times in their beginning. It, it actually pays a lot of toll. I mean, so you have to have like set up your experimental lab so many times. So it was a difficult journey. So if you ask me, how was your journey? So in one word, I can tell you it's adventurous. It's something I really enjoyed, so I would say. I don't have anything to tell. And from Kolkata right. to Kolkata Mohanpur, to Mohanpur, 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 Mohanpur Transit Mohanpur. Campus to the final campus. Exactly, exactly. So it was a difficult and adventurous journey. I think I have enjoyed totally. So that's what I would say actually. And about the Vatnagar Award, of course, this is an award which nationally very well recognized. Of course, I'm very happy, but as Professor Paul just mentioned that I have a I have to be happy in a two reason actually, not just I have received the partner, but happy to be, I'm also head of the department of chemical science. Yes. So this chemi this department has become, you know, I mean, a part of history. I don't know actually whether it will be broken or not, but at least I can tell proudly that our department, we have received two partner awards in the same year, which uh, never happened to my knowledge. So. I'm double happy about that. Exactly. I mean, I, uh, we've never heard about two awards in the same department right. in the right. same year, right? I think, I think it's important to say that when you say that ISARS have got two awards, is basically when the awards have been announced, they have been in the ISAR system. And at that time, they were affiliated to ISAR. For example, people have worked, like Rahul Banerjee, I think he's even mm -hmm. come sure. back to him. Yes. So he has worked in NCL Pune for a long time, but then has moved to ISAR Kolkata. So I think it's important to uh, clarify what we mean by saying two awards, that when the awards have been announced, they have been officially in the ISA. And I, I think it's a journey of, uh, journey continues. And I was also in NCL, now I am here. The journey anyway continues, uh, mm -hmm. and, but the research is very important. So maybe, maybe you should, you should, you should yeah, look at, so uh, you know. Yeah, so I'll come back to Shadin in a while, but uh, just begin with Rahul a bit. Like Professor Pal said that you've come here from NCL. So you are kind of a new member in the Isaac Kolkata family. But of course, we are so happy that you brought us not only the Bhatnagar, but also the Shwarno Jayanti when you came. But uh, how has this move been? No, NCL is a different system. It's a CSI lab. Isaac Kolkata is a different system. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for... Uh, I mean, and for, I mean, thanks to the, all the viewers for uh, for being there. And uh, I would like to mention that uh, yes, um, it is difficult in Indian system to move from one place to another. Uh, it's not easy. But every now and then, uh, for the you know sake um, of the career, you move from one place to another. That happens. And yes, it comes with uh, added issues, added adventure, added joy, you know, added sorrow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, mm, that you have to be, I mean, that you, that should be the part of it. And I, I believe that that has also happened. But one good thing I must tell, you know, when I joined NCL about 10 years ago, and when I joined ISAR about, you know, uh, about a year ago, one good thing I, I was, I'm, I must say that um, I have been quite lucky that my colleagues that time in NCL, throughout after that, and my colleagues in ISAR have been very cooperative and very helpful. They have never let me feel that, you know, I'm like an outsider. I just joined, you know, something like that. It was always like from the day one, I have been, you know, I have been welcomed into the community, welcomed into the ISAR community first in the chemistry department. Later, in the entire ISAR, I started you know, talking to people. And it was a really, you know, very pleasurable journey. The support I received from the department, the support I received from the colleague from, you know, from the day one. That I must uh, acknowledge. Uh, and regarding the award, yes, um, I do agree that it is it is really a, a moment of joy and moment of honor for the entire ISAR system as well as the Indian scientific community as well as the CSI system for, I, for where I work. And I, I am very happy that I am part of it, part of that moment, part of the joy. And uh, in the ISAR system, um, you know, this is the first time I am teaching the undergrads. And this is also an interesting part of my life. And You're I, enjoying the teaching? I am. I am enjoying. Initially, now let me be very honest over here. <laughs> Initially, I was <clears throat> I was a bit nervous. How I will feature? How I will tell? Although it, you know, in in NCL also we have Academy of Scientific and you know, uh, innovation, innovative, innovative research. So um, ACSIR, the ACSIR under the ACSIR, I also taught, but it is not in the this much grand scale that what in ISR is. Yes, I know. No, no doubt. No, I mean nothing. I will be. I will be lying if I say that I have not. Uh, initially, I did uh, did not 
worry about it. I was, I was definitely worried, but you know, as you go to the class, you start feeling good about it. Just I'll add to Rahul. Yes, yes, absolutely. About the teaching, actually. So I have something to say. Uh, I mean, I think we are blessed with the students actually here. Absolutely. I mean, they're so smart. Actually, they will keep you on toe. So many a time while teaching, after teaching discussion, I had to admit that you know I don't know at this moment the answer. So let me give, I mean have some time. I get back study, to you. Get back to you. Yes. So so I think this is. A, Fantastic, actually. Yeah, that's, that's the advantage of whole ISA system. So we are doing teaching and research, which always, I mean, kind of gives you more and new learning. And I think for it's us, really they keep us going, right? right? Even when we went through all the transitions, the students were a constant. Absolutely. So. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, and Professor Paul would, I think, agree because yeah, he's I such agree. a great teacher himself. Oh, thank you. What, uh, I think this is... Uh, I, I think we'd also like them to tell a little bit about their work. Yes, what absolutely. Kind of work. Sure, sure. So, sure. what yeah. gave you the Bhatnagar? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, so let me put in a simplified way, actually. So, so I think uh, what we have been trying to do here in our lab uh, for the last 10 years or so, so we are trying to develop a concept. Uh, so, we work in catalysis, actually. So, you know, I mean, catalysis is something... You make a process which is more energy efficient. So you know, I mean, so any product you make. So to to be very general with the topic, actually, let me tell you, in any developed country, catalysis pays uh, uh, economic growth a lot. So it's somewhere between 20 to 30 percent GDP. You can understand the amount of economic growth it pays. So to. could you please elaborate? You know what kind right. of scenarios? So. So, for example, what we have been doing, for example, what we have been doing, we are trying to develop different types of catalyst for different processes. One of the processes is CC coupling, so something called CC coupling catalysis. So, if you want to do any organic synthesis, you have to build up a molecules and then you have to make a new bond between carbon and carbon. And then this CC coupling catalysis is very well recognized area. So this was awarded a Nobel Prize already in the year of 2010 because based on that, so us, uh, industry can prepare a lot of molecules which is of great value like drug, like materials, like fungicides a lot. But the, one of the problems after this 2010 Nobel Prize was awarded, and a lot of scientists started thinking that this requires a very heavy metal like palladium. Okay, heavy metal is very expensive and many a times they're toxic to our environment. And you have to think about, you know, I mean, creating these products in ton scale. So eventually you use like a 2000 kg, one industry. So just I was visiting two, two, three days back, one industry, they told they themselves use three tons of palladium, actually, just one industry. So like that. So this ultimately comes back to the environment. So as a result, you have to have some kind of alternative thought which will avoid such a toxic and expensive metals. But the problem is that, so they are unique in their property. You cannot so easily mimic their property in terms of uh, developing catalyst. So that's the really problem. So this is somehow, it's a global problem, not just we are working in the whole world. So there are many groups that are trying to develop more cost effective, more benign metals. One of the thought process is, of course, you can use iron based or base metal based catalyst, which are very cheap, uh, iron based, nickel based catalyst. And eco friendly. Yeah, eco friendly, right. absolutely. So, what is our thought process is that can you use not even metal, but still you can do exactly the same process? Can you mimic the job of a metal? So, that's what we have done actually in the laboratory scale where we could show that you do not have to use such a heavy and toxic poisonous metal, but still you can do same CC coupling catalysis. You can still make certain drug molecules without using those type of metals. So that is a conceptual developed. I think this is one of the work which is very well recognized by the Bhatnagar committee uh, that for giving me this. this so you are basically designing alternate uh, catalysts. Alternate catalysts. So for example, we are also, I mean, so this is a branching of our work. So we are paying a lot of attention to that. So we are now trying to do some of another challenging reaction we are trying to do is that carbon dioxide to fuel conversion. So, you mm. know, I mean, carbon dioxide 
is a toxic gas, actually greenhouse gas. So it is responsible for our global warming and we, every day, I mean, industry is generating. You'll be surprised to know that India is producing right now a lot of carbon dioxide, actually in the top uh, production of carbon dioxide, you can look at. So we have to have some mechanism so you can take that carbon dioxide, which is produced by the industry or running cars and all these things, vehicles. Then you can convert to some useful materials. Sure. So what we have developed once again, so we could capture carbon dioxide without using any metal. So far again, uh, scientists have used ruthenium, iridium based metals to capture carbon dioxide and convert to methanol. So that's fuel. So we have done without using any metal, in, again in the lab scale. And based on this discovery, we have also established a small startup company, which uh, oh. the company name is Envision Technology Private Limited. At this moment, we are trying to make it a pilot scale, actually, so that we can take it really to the market. So that is what, at this moment, we are working on. Nice. Yeah. So we hope you are going to go into more uh, industry level. Yeah, so we are, I am very interested to do translate our science to real. And you are also one of the society. founding directors of the right. RISE Foundation. So right. we hope to get <laughs> more you know, outputs for the society from your lab in the future. I am sure I would love to do that. Okay. So, so Rahul, could you tell us? Well, uh, what do we uh, make, I mean, we have been working uh, since last 10 years, is that we make adsorbents, we make porous materials. Uh, all of us are aware of adsorbents. We do know because, you know, the shirt and all these clothes we are wearing, they, they absorb. If you soak it in water, they become heavy. You dry it into sun, they become light. So similarly, on the molecular level also, you can make a lot of adsorbents. Zeolites are one of the adsorbents that you use in day-to-day uh, -day in your uh, water cell, purifying. all the water purifiers, you know. So, um, so like that, we are making the absorbents for you know capturing the CO2 and hydrogen, especially. Now, these two projects, are especially for the hydrogen storage, people say that hydrogen storage is is a problem or a project for the future. I mean, it is for our future generation that when the earth will become really polluted. I mean, you know, if we keep on going the you know in the pace we are going, we really have uh, we really do not will will not have any other alternatives other than using hydrogen or sunlight or those kind of those kind of uh, alternating alternative energies hydrogen being an alternative energy there is already a quite a bit of progress in terms of fuel cell in germany there are a lot of fuel cell based trains fuel cell based mm. vehicles but they have a serious problem is that they still have to store hydrogen in the liquefied form so liquid hydrogen is one of the fundamental fuel for the rockets, you know, that the, that the extremely high thrust it gets to, you know, escape the, to achieve the escape velocity, you need liquid hydrogen. So, but it is extremely expensive and uh, to do it and it is uh, quite difficult to store and there is a safety hazard. So in order to store hydrogen in a, in a gas form, where you can use it uh, into a cylinder like a day-to-day -day usage, and use it as and when you need. This has, needs a material which will absorb hydrogen. First of all, in uh, you know, in, in room temperature, it has to absorb hydrogen in 50 degrees centigrade temperature in Rajasthan. It has to absorb hydrogen at minus 30 degrees centigrade temperature in Alaska. So it has to be you know it has its absorbing cap capability should be a widespread or, or a broad temperature basis. So. So we are trying to make materials. We have been trying. We have been working on that for quite some time to make materials which will do this job. Its fueling rate has to be very high because you know nobody wants to uh, go to a pump, you know, gas station and then you know put a nozzle into his car and wait for 10 hours to get filled up. So that's not going to work. So there are a lot of technical problems. And as I said, this is a this is a storing hydrogen is a problem for the future because because it it cannot be done by one scientist or one group of scientists. It needs a huge team where scientists from uh, from chemistry, physics, engineering sciences has to come together and uh, create a material or create a um, technology which will solve the problem. So right. we are a, a part of it. We are trying to do something like that. And apart from that, what we have been trying lately is that to, to make some of these uh, adsorbents for this water purification. You know, mm. water is a serious concern in yes. India, especially in India. If we, when we go abroad, we drink water from the tap. Right. In Absolutely. India, you cannot do that. You know. So, the, so our, I mean, uh, those um, 
who can afford it can uh, purchase these water purifiers you know and um, and purchase water from the bottles for you know purified water but those who can't they need to still drink from the tap and the tap water contains a different type of pollute pollutants one of them is being uh, persistent organic pollutants that actually appears or that uh, that comes from this called plastics people say that plastics don't degrade actually they do mm. they do degrade but they degrade very, very slowly, slowly. and then the what they create or what they what they extract or, or they leach out into the environment is called some perfluorinated compound mm. that's why plastic you can store you know store oil and you can store water into the same plastic bag these perfluorinated products go to the water directly and so and then eventually everything every everyone or, or everyone is eating those perfluorinated products by some way or other because once it goes to the water then first species which starts eating them are fishes right those who takes fish you know they start consuming especially bengalis <laughs> they, they start consuming in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in another direction we are we may think that you know we are buying very expensive fish and this that from the market but actually we are consuming that perfluorinated product directly so these are neurotoxins and you know if you keep on eating them for a longer period of time it will start giving you an tremendous amount i don't want to go into it and you know scare people off so what we are trying to do over here is for the time being is that to try to create some of the cheaper adsorbents and which can uh, suppose if you take that adsorbents and if you so you know put it into a let's say tank full of water then it will absorb all these not only this perfluorinated adsorbent but also dirt particles and other things because let me be very honest here separating dirt particle is actually easy yes than these things you know separate dirt particles you can separate people have been separating it for a longer period normal of time. filtration process filtration process right. will work fairly well but these things this 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 persistent organic pollutants are very very difficult to separate so this will absorb and eventually you know this will give you an affordable and drinking water you know there is another way you can do it you can pass it through a membrane hmm. but membrane there is already a you know technology we have been using people use the membrane technology in ro right ro reverse ro. osmosis yes. another way membrane filtration is you know couple of different techniques you can do it so uh, the idea should be once again the idea should be then you need to have a membrane yes and every now and then you need to do a give do a back filtration and then clean the membrane in this particular case if you have if you if you get a you know very cheap adsorbent if you just dip it into it like for example we are dipping tea bags hmm. so similar way if you dip this thing and it absorbs all these percent in organic pollutants and all other particles uh, smaller particles into it then you take it out like a tea bag and you throw it and then you drink the water so that concept we are working on for the time being so let's see how the whole thing progresses and uh, you know we we hope for the best so hopefully you will also have uh, eventually developed some products which will go into that is absolutely correct production. As, as professor paul few days before i saw this one another facebook live program which was really excellent and you know there uh, uh, professor paul and uh, two of my colleagues uh, professor shyam shen gupta and professor ran banerji they have discussed in detail how icer has now developed this rice foundation right you know i am frankly speaking is very excited one of the founder directors founder is sitting next to you is also here yes correct and i have been uh, i uh, as an icer faculty is uh, you know is, is very very excited i have been hearing this news and finally this news is officially announced now yes as soon as and i'm hoping in few years time or even if, if not less once we get some kind of prototype i'll definitely come back to them for advices and guidance to how to take this thing into the forward take to this take this thing forward to the market you know at the end of the day even if we can have uh, create some kind of primary technology right which another company will buy from us or take it up like large companies like bsf or dow chemicals or dupont if they can take it up and that will be a really you know in fact we have already thing. had a success story in that yes. front also right, right, right. So, so that fact, yeah. that will be that will be my target i mean that's that's where i'm i'm trying to take my research into my research over there professor pali was saying something i just wanted to tell you if you look at the themes of their research you know there are two emerging themes which are very common actually yes one is energy yes so for as hadin said he wants to do conversion of co2 to fuels eventually the the proper catalyst and of course in this case is the hydrogen mm. so i mean this the fuel is going to become a very important problem so we have to find alternative sources of energy so they are impacting the area of energy yes. second is environment so as again sadhin said that he is looking for non toxic metal which is very very important to tra- transform these reactions 
So in the same way, he is trying to do the absorbent, mm. trying to start develop adsorbents, which will absorb toxic gases. And also, at the same time, store hydrogen, right, which will be used for fuel. Sure. So if you look at two emerging themes, which are very common, which is very ex- interesting, actually, for this year's both the Bhatnagar Awardees, that it is on the energy and environment. And both will, of course, have to get, get them at an economic right. Point. Absolutely. In fact, I was you know, listening to you, I was thinking, you know, we have a lot of discussion about the sustainable development goals yes, for uh, uh, UN has given. And you, absolutely. between the two of you, actually happen to cover several of them, you know, yes. clean water, clean energy, yes, yes, uh, yes. health for all. So we so, are actually, you know, going good at that. <laughs> so clean water is also very important. So energy, yes. environment, sanitation, you know, absolutely. So it's a very important area uh, for the country. Today, the government is also very much interested yes, in putting, you know, th- giving thrust to this area. So, I'm very happy that the awards have also gone in the right areas of research. So, way forward, what are you looking forward to now? Yeah, it's a challenge. You know, I must <laughs> say that. Because yeah, so, as you said, teaching teaching has to continue with the research. Absolutely. So that is one of the big challenges. That's the primary in job we have. Indian Institute of Science Education Research is it's both science education and research. Absolutely. So I think that is a challenge that all our faculties have. How to balance? You are you are asking that question before. I must come back. That how to balance teaching and research. I think this is a very very important point. And as as you said, you know, I, I mean, think uh, so. Yeah, it's a very yeah, important point. Actually, I'll take it up. Uh, from here. <coughs> I don't see teaching and research as separate. Actually, I would say they are yeah. integral part. Actually, so right. And that is so, what it should be. Uh, that is what it should be, and that is that is what it is actually. So that's my experience in last ten years. I've been teaching ten years in, in this institution, undergrads, uh, and then MA student, and also PhD students, all categories. And then I realized that actually without teaching, I mean, I can't be motivated truly in research actually. So this should be an integral part. I mean, so to me, I don't really understand that how uh, one can be motivated without some amount of teaching. I mean, and in sort of... In some sense, actually. That's a very good thought. Absolutely. So, so, so it's really important. So I guess even when people are in research labs, still they are teaching to some extent right, because right. they so, have their yeah, PhD students. Absolutely. Right. So when you go for teaching, you have to make sure that you know the subject very well. Absolutely. It's not getting numbers. And you keep learning, questions, right? Yeah? Every every course learning. you teach, so, yeah, even the next year you learn something so new. This because is the greatest advantage of ISR system, I would say. Yeah, at the same time, it sometimes happens that the best of the researchers are not necessarily the best of the teachers sure. and vice versa. Yeah. It has happened. Yes. So I think the challenge is to strike that balance Absolutely. that not only you Absolutely. teach, you are interested in teaching, you are a very good teacher and, and then perform very good as researchers. I think to me as a director, I see that this is a challenge that all faculties have to rise up to and continue to do. And that is what will make the ISR Kolkata and the existence of I said Kolkata really successful in the long run. Absolutely. So Rahul, you have uh, anything to tell us about what you're looking forward to? Any new challenges? Well, uh, what, uh, um, uh, as I said, lately we have been trying to make uh, some of these um, uh, materials where in general it's like, uh, for, you know, every day we use in our houses this scotch bite hmm. or this aluminium or the steel scrubber. You know, there is a slight difference between them is that uh, this is something we are trying to work in the you know, next maybe 10 years or so is that the the scotch bite or the steel scrubber that you use the they are actually disordered material there is no order there is no periodicity you know it's just like a lump type of stuff however if you see uh, the steel scrubber if you take out the threads and if you cut them into pieces they're made of steel hmm. they're steel hmm. flakes steel flakes are crystalline hmm. there is order so it's basically a disordered structure organized, I mean, organized by assembling a lot of ordered structures. So an order actually creating a disorder you know, or disorder has been has been infused into an order. So that is, you know, so what we are thinking in future is that to create some of these kind of balanced order, disorder structures and, uh, and try to understand how into this into this system or into this regime, some of these uh, biomolecules behave. Uh-huh. They behave differently. They behave like enzymes. You know. They how how do they behave within this disorder structure? You know, they behave. A lot of people have studied their behavior in an ordered structure. A lot of people have studied their behavior in a disorder structure. 
but into a system which is hybrid of those plants where there is a there is a hybrid um, uh, how these biomolecules or for example enzyme as i said enzymes or nanoparticles some of the other things how do they behave into this into this uh, mixed regime so that is something uh, something we are looking forward to but that's going to take a little bit time uh, so we are working on it but at this current juncture i would strongly try to push or finish one of my you know project that we have been working as as i said this one of this hydrogen fuel storage and uh, and uh, and this water purification things water purification we have moved some quite a bit of distance so if we can at least have a year year and a half if we can create some kind of prototype cheaper prototype like it has to be cheaper then i believe that we can at least approach this rice foundation and yeah. see how it is going yeah. so so hopefully you are going to work with rise and rise is going to work with you and we are going to have so what is the status of the hydrogen i have also been working on the hydrogen storage correct correct in a different way correct so what is the current status and what is the target so the current status i mean the way it has it was the start i mean initially the target was that to you know store hydrogen in a gaseous form about 6 to 8%, 6 to 8 to 8% in in room temperature that was the target which means so on, 100 on gram top of the surface or something no in a, suppose if you pack up 100 gram of uh, solid like a powdered yeah, solid absorbed. it should at least take 8 gram of hydrogen adsorbed. 6 to 8 gram adsorb hydrogen this is all yeah. so that was the target at room temperature at room, at room temperature. temperature so um, so that was the target in 2010 you know right. so now what people have realized that you know in order to get um, hydrogen in the gaseous form in a physics out manner in room temperature 8 to 8% is going to be uh, we really don't have the science up to the level our science is not developed so what is uh, right now so right, right now what they are doing they are to taking into uh, partially gaseous so the pressure is high so it is a sort of partially gaseous and partially liquid as form okay. let's put it in this way okay. in our cooking gas the way it is we store them in a liquid as a liquid when it arrives in our house it is a liquid right. but we use them as as a gas. gas right so exactly in the same way so you know to some extent compressed using some of these materials cheaper materials they have been using some composites which are which are called metal organic frameworks and zeolite composites so dual zeolite to give them the stability metal organic frameworks inside to give the mm, give the performance so a composite mixture the where the cost remains in a balance and uh, and uh, and try to utilize this part so this was the um, venture that we ourselves worked with german federal government and they have now you know recently launched a train which is stuttgart to munich uh, where they are using these fuel cell vehicles where the hydrogen is stored in this particular way okay you know? but as you can understand that they had to collaborate with the government and they need they needed subsidy for that they needed humongous amount of money because it's still not cheap it's still not cheap it is still not affordable and it is literally not affordable for us right. in our country where the you know there are there are a lot of scarcity it's still not affordable for us so i think the next step will be for them is to or for anybody to take to to hit that technology and try to you know cut down the cost mm. step by step by step step by step that's where the engineering science and the physics community needs to come into the picture to give us more information that what exactly is happening and what exactly we are making a mistake what exactly we are not going in the correct direction so that it so that things happen much faster right if you keep on try, trying and keep on making mistake that's the way you can you can move yeah but it'll take long i think i think i'll just uh, add to rahul's point you know i mean so it's very important as you are telling that engineering science so it's very important that we work together I mean, yes. in different branches yes. so in every Just field it's right. like that so, now right, right? So, so we should not be we need to collaborate and i think again iser yeah. has an advantage yeah. there because we have interdisciplinarity so, yes, built absolutely. into our system so, like like rahul was telling in sadin swar also there's a lot of chemistry behind you know in designs the catalyst so i have a general question you know so much sure. of chemistry you are doing how do you encourage this is a problem today. how do you encourage the best students to come together now you have a you are a role model that is a very have interesting you, question. have you thought of this i mean this is one of the challenges we have to take up you know so you have a lot of chemistry behind it but very often that is uh, not something which well, is appreciated uh, so no, but i think dr yeah. paul's question i will rephrase a little bit how do you encourage the best students to, to come, come to in science. chemistry, chemistry. no chemistry science. in india <laughs> well, well, of course, of course, yeah. Probably, if we put it probably in more in Indian context. Uh, but, but I think, I think that's a challenge that uh, you you have, and I think we will expect 
to bring it out. It's not the chemistry alone. It's the science. Yeah. Yes, exactly. First of all, we have to get the lure of the engineering yeah, yeah. is still very high. We have to get the best high. students to come to science because whether it is chemistry or physics, you know, they are very interrelated. So when you say chemistry, I could say interpret that as also physics or biology, whatever you are doing. So the question is, how will you, how will you give the spirit to the best students that there is a big challenge in doing science? Absolutely. And so that is that is something Absolutely. That you, have to, you should I am not saying that you have a ready answer, so, so right. but so, you must address this problem. So we don't have ready answer, but I just want to give a thought actually. I want to float a thought. When I used to teach uh, ISR Kolkata first year course, you know, I mean, I used to teach KM 101 in the beginning, first three years, I think I taught it. And that time, during the 2007, 8, 9, those are the time. I have noticed that many students who used to come to ISR, maybe till today, they are still, probably it is the second thought they came to ISR actually. Probably they wanted to do engineering, mm -hmm. but still they came in ISR system somehow. So I always, to start with my class, I always put a question to them that, you know, I mean, if I tell you, if I ask you, give me a name of five scientist name and five engineers name let's say i mean i'm not putting pulling down on anybody this is a fact so you tell me how long you will take to name whom everybody knows in the whole world so my point is simple so you you can tell very fast five scientists name you can tell einstein fleming newton so there are many names will come Faraday. but finding out five very famous engineers name which Everybody knows. Maybe people will take some time. Of course, they are very important. I mean, science and engineering, they are both absolutely important. Just to motivate them. So, I am just putting this thought. These scientists, I would say, never die actually. So, I don't see Einstein died. Actually. So, they are always alive. So, if you want to be alive over... I mean, you generations. Don't want to die. Like, yeah, over I mean, generations. I think I understand your point yeah. that the both. I mean, I don't really distinguish between science, engineering, ah, medicine. Absolutely. Today, everything is science. Basic science, engineering science, medical science. Everything is called science. Art science. So, I think that is understood. The spirit of science is there everywhere. In fact, you cannot be very good in engineering unless you have the same spirit. And it has to be together, right? Yeah. Science, engineering right. and You medicine. have to be the spirit of innovation. Yeah. The problem is that there has been a lopsided... Uh, emphasis that the best students are not coming to the fundamental science. They are going to the engineering science. I will say they are also going to the science. I will give grant it to them. But they are going to engineering science or even medical science. And medical science is also becoming more of a clinical yes, medicine rather absolutely. than really medical science. So that spirit of innovation, I would say, are doing new discovery or in innovation that is something that is missing. So it is either in engineering science or in medical science or in fundamental science. So I think that is very important that you have to address. Right. Absolutely. So somebody has asked a question on Facebook. Uh, what are the possibilities of converting carbon dioxide to oxygen? I think the question is for Shadin. <laughs> Asked by somebody, Orunabhu Patro. Carbon dioxide to oxygen. So it's reverse to... We'll need the plants. <laughs> yeah. So it reverse to photosynthesis, photosynthesis, right? So basically... So we need plant, artificial photosynthesis. No, it is photosynthesis. Yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah, we'll, right. we'll need plants. Right, but this is a very important problem today, right? So artificial photosynthesis. So the question is, the question that probably right. he's asking is that can we, is there any attempt to do it in the lab? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are people many. People are trying to do photosynthesis artificially. Artificial photosynthetic system. Yeah, so how, how what, what is the status? I mean, I know there are a lot of people. Below. So, right. Because I mean, first of all, how much you can produce in oxygen? Uh, I don't have exact statistics at this moment with me, but I can tell you that at lab scale it has been done actually. So, but not definitely in the huge scale. It's a, again a big problem. People are trying to do it. If you can do it, carbon dioxide. Actually, it's quite interesting now. You know, even if you look at the Nobel prizes, biology is kind of uh, becoming the area in which yes, everybody yes, so is working. Absolutely. And you know, a lot of uh, people are getting uh, inspirations from biological systems. And I guess in a lot of innovations, yes. 
living so, systems have an so, answer. So this this answer, as CO two to oxygen, will actually pro- probably come from biology. That's what how photosynthesis, right? How do you mimic the photosynthesis? Right. How do you mimic photosynthesis? Right. You mimic photosynthesis? And, and Again, but you need chemists and engineers yeah, yeah, and yeah, biologists to work together. And this is this is really you know in a way synthetic biology. Yes, absolutely. Uh, represent. So I think this time also the Nobel prizes in chemistry also had. Relevance to biology. Evolution. Yeah, evolution. <laughs> so, in yeah, nutshell, yeah. I mean, I think we should work together, right? Biology, Absolutely. Science, engineering, yeah. medicine. I mean, so that's the culture. But this is a very important yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. So, toxin. Because if you can do that, a lot of problems would be solved. But I think that is where you require, uh, you know, photosynthesis, artificial photosynthesis. Artificial in photosynthesis. the lab, in the lab, to the extent that it is feasible. Of course, yes. you can't Absolutely. Show, no, everything has to, has to be taken up yes, to the industry. It has level. to be feasible. So that is the challenge. Okay, so I think we'll wrap up today. Thank you and congratulations once again, Shadin and Rahul. Great having you here. And thanks to Professor Pal for finding time from his busy schedule. We are very happy that this has happened. And I just wish that ISR Kolkata will continue to scale greater heights. Uh, Great heights, greater heights. And I think more and more people will uh, be recognized. More and more people will first do very good work. And then we'll hope that they're work also gets recognized in the country as well as in the world. And I'm pretty sure with the kind of people that we have, with the ecosystem that we have built here, this will happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. So you have done very professionally. Back.